Final score, Wrexham 1, Maiden Edge United 0. And, well, this is Wrexham in 2022. Even the comfortable 1-0 wins are done with a bit of drama. This was a, a daft one uh, in many ways. It could have been 6. But Maiden Edge's backup keeper, who made his debut last Saturday and was only playing because their first-choice goalkeeper got sent off, Andre was sensational. Uh, made a string of crazy saves, especially in the second half. He had no right to. And as a result, well, it was very comfortable. Maidenhead didn't threaten, but, you know, had won the goal leads and never quite enough. And so a game that could have been a thrashing actually ended with a narrow margin of victory. But that's all that matters. Wrexham made two changes, Elliot Lee freshening things up in midfield, coming in for Jordan Davis. Likewise, Bryce Hosanna's second start of the season at left wing back gave Callum McFadden a rest. And we started as we went to go on. Second minute, we could have scored. Toza feeding a good ball into the edge of the area. Palmer turning it nicely on the corner. Great chance for James Jones, 10 yards out, left of the goal. Tried to shape it round the keeper, got it too straight and hit it pretty much straight at him. The pattern then for much of the rest of the first half hour was Wrexham working away. Maidenhead, to be fair, were organised. Their midfield sat quite deep. And they made it really crowded and difficult to pass through them. Wrexham were struggling to, to get that final ball in, despite dominating. Lee typically nearly worked his magic, working a cute one-two with Palmer, but then his shot on the edge of the area was deflected. And then, in the 20th minute, Mullen driving down the left channel worked a nice one-two with Ozana outside him. Tight angle, he decided to take the shot on. Why not? He's Paul Mullen. And also the strikers maybe hadn't quite kept up with him, but from a tight angle he could only drive it into the side netting. 24th minute came a, an absolutely remarkable let off and the first of Andre's miracles. Corner comes in from Young, aiming for Hayden, who jumps for it but can't quite reach it in the goal mouth. He hits the ground and carries on, his momentum taking him to the goal line. This will be relevant in a moment. Mullen, behind him, manages to stoop and head the ball on target. Toza, in the goal mouth, to pokes the toe out to it and diverts it towards goal. Now, Hayden's run has carried on into the goalkeeper. Not a foul, but he's there right in front of him. The keeper surely can't see the ball. And yet, somehow, manages to snake a leg around Hayden... And as the ball's crossing the line, get his foot to it and poke it clear. A, a bizarre incident. A phenomenal save, really. Hayden, like I said, right in the keeper's face. And somehow he just reaches around him. It's remarkable. And the ball was crossing the line. It was so close to being a goal. The referee and linesman did ever so well to pick the bones out of it. Wrexham did take the lead in the 30th minute. But the context is important. No reason I can work out for this, but there were a heck of a lot of head injuries in this match. And one of them happens straight before the goal. A corner swung in, Toza attacked it. Brilliant defensive header by Massey to put it behind for another corner. Massey was able to continue, Toza wasn't, and had to go off. He would emerge later with a bandage around his head. Wrexham had Hayden attacking the Young's corner around the penalty spot, met it with a powerful header, great header. Andre, ironically considering what he was to do later and what he'd done six minutes earlier, should have done better, really. The orthodox save was the one that defeated him. It was it was really moving as a heck of a, a header. The velocity was impressive, but it was directly above the keeper's head. He got his hands up too late and it went pushed it into the roof of the net. Hayden with his eighth goal this season, already equaling the total he got last season, and he would go on to go close on a number of more occasions. Did Toza's injury contribute to the goal? Possibly. Is that old truism about defences switching off when they have to defend a set piece after a long stoppage? And also maybe the marking was just mixed up a little bit. But anyway, Hayden scored the goal. Maidenhead responded pretty well, trying to come at Wrexham, but weren't creating chances. First minute of the second half, in fact, was the only effort they had, which I thought was really worth any mention of. And it wasn't a chance. It was a brilliant effort of set-piece clears. And Charlie Adams, about 25 yards out and stretching slightly to his left, made contact with a glorious volley, which was aiming for the top left corner, didn't quite hit the target. But that was about it in terms of effect from Maidenhead, in all honesty. Wrexham going back 
on the offensive started to really cause major problems and open maiden head up. Young with a corner. Hayden hit it on target. Barrett in the near post cleared it straight back to Hayden, who hit it on target again. And Barrett brilliantly made his second uh, goal line clearance in two seconds, jumping and managed to get enough of his head on it to deflect it over the bar. Tremendous piece of defending. Then it was Lee dancing down the left-hand side, feeding a nice ball to Mullen, who dummied it to Ford on the right corner of the box. He drove it in across the face of goal. Nobody was able to get a touch, and it just scraped past the far post. A minute later, Ford again, thinking in a great cross. Mullen attacking it, getting there first six yards out, but his marker managed to dive in, and Mullen's goal-bound header was deflected over for a corner. And then from that corner, Wrexham sweeping it in, Toes are laying it off nicely, and James Jones, 25 yards out, repl looking to replicate the shot he had last sat there. Well, he did replicate it, because he hit it like a rocket, and it went just off target, aiming for the top corner, just missed. A little worrying incident happened in the 71st minute. Jordan Tunnicliffe was excellent again, but he had to go off injures. Now, Clifton, the target man for Maidenhead, was jumping into the defenders a bit when the ball was in the air. And I'm not saying it was vicious or dangerous. Maybe he should have been penalised a couple of times by the referee, but you know, they weren't major. But Tony Cliff jumped with him, and as Clifton knocked into him, made him land a bit awkwardly. Whether that was the problem or whether he picked up a dead leg, I'm not sure. He got treatment, came back out again. It was a corner. The ball was swung to the far post and Tunnicliffe, who hobbled back into the penalty area, he didn't look right at all, made a brilliant leap to just make his uh, the defensive header and put it behind for another corner and that was him done. He had to come off. So let's hope it's nothing too serious. Tom O'Connor came on in his place, left side of the centre-back and didn't have a huge amount to do. Clifton, I think, tried to rough him up a bit and didn't really have much of an impact and Wrexham was soon back on the offensive. <laughs> In crazy manner, Young sweeping the ball in, and the, the the second half madness was about to begin. Toza uh, met it with a, a poke towards goal, and well, I, I mean I don't know. It took a, a a big big deflection, ricocheted in the opposite direction, and somehow the keeper managed to get his toe to it and flick it up in the air. It went above the height of the crossbar came back down and Palmer was attacking it Andre did brilliantly having made this astonishing save going the wrong way and sticking his foot out leapt up and did equally well to get up and challenge for this one and made the punch clear like Palmer was bound to nod it into a net from a foot out but then hmm, it was an unorthodox sort of roundhouse punch. He made contact with the ball, carried on, followed through and left one on Palmer, who needed a lot of treatment, had to go off and come back with his head bandaged up. Penalty? I think you could make a case for it. Uh, I think it'd have to be a brave ref to give it. Um, I've just realised I completely got mixed up with the start of that move then. Um, Hayden met the corner from Young and headed it on target and De Havilland headed it off the, got it off the line. So a third clearance off the line from Hayden. Poor bloke. Anyway, Wrexham continued to tear into Maidenhead who had to leave a few gaps as they pushed on and Wrexham were making chances. Mullin breaking into the box, running at a last defender. Brilliant last ditch tackle by Massey who jammed the ball up against Mullin's ankle. So the ball sat invitingly in the box. Mullen overran after being tackled. Massey was still on the floor. Mullen turns and tried to get back to the ball first. Massey swept his foot at it and Mullen went down. Referee did not give a penalty. This is an interesting one to me. I think the ref's right. At the time, I didn't think it was a penalty. Um, looking at it again, I still don't think it was a penalty. But I think VAR would give it. Because VAR seems to emphasise contact over force. Uh, Massey definitely hit the back of Mullins' Achilles. I don't think probably hard enough. But I reckon if this was a game of VAR, Wrexham would have had a penalty. Makes no difference because uh, two minutes later we got a penalty. Brilliant work by Ford driving down the right hand side. Cutting between two men. Just delayed his pass inside to Mullen for a moment. To get the perfect weight and positioning on it. Rolled Mullen in. Rollin, Mullen bursting past to Havilland the last defender. To Havilland came across. Legged him over. Penalty this time. Definitely. To Havilland lucky not to get a yellow. 
Mullin stepped up, sent the keeper the wrong way, went for power, and put it wide to the right post. <laughs> Something of a shock. And so, still, it was 1-0. Wrexham refreshing things up. Jordan Davis came on for Lee for the last five minutes. McAlinda replaced Hosanna on the 90. There were eight minutes of added time to play, just like in the first half, because of all these head injuries. Uh, Hosanna had tied himself out, I think, and taken a bit of a knock. And Wrexham, in added time, had three more chances, all of which were terribly close, two of which were, again, magical moments by the goalkeeper, Andre. Firstly, a lovely move by Wrexham. Palmer to Mullen, popping a perfect through ball. James Jones burst between the two centre-backs. One-on-one with the keeper. Drove it into the bottom right corner. Keeper spread himself, made an excellent save with his left foot. Then, third minute of added time, a, 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 a daft one. The ball falling to Mullen. He drove the shot in. It took a double deflection, one way and then the other, and the keeper, despite having committed themselves, still managed to get across and save it, scrambling around. A brilliant save. In the fourth minute of added time, another moment of drama. McAlinden with a good tackle, Jordan Davis getting the ball, nutmegging his man, then riding another tackle on the edge of the area, and as he lost balance, lashing in a shot, which went just over the bar. So Rexham won 1 0. Could have been more, should have been more. There was sort of that slight edginess of it only being a one-goal lead, but in all honesty, they never really threatened. This was as comfortable as the Altrincham game in many ways, just not as many goals went in. Looking at the performances, Mark Howard had nothing to do. Let's leave it there. The centre-backs were all good when they had to be. Out of the three, I was I thought Toza did very well in the closing stages when Maidenhead trying to launch balls into the box, repelling them really well. But Hayden also was very good at constant threat on set pieces, driving play forwards too. And Tunnicliffe again just looks a very, very good centre-back. So the three of them were solid. Um, when O'Connor came on, Clifton looked like he tried to rough him up a bit and, and didn't really achieve it. Centre-mids, Young dropping a little deeper and starting to start play, did well. A lot of energy, especially in the opening stages of the game. And was was trying to probe and punch passes through. With him, James Jones again put in his usual good shift. All have been disappointed to have missed those two chances at the start and the end. But his movement again just assisted Ford. Elliot Lee had a good game in the centre of midfield. Some things didn't quite come off for him, but he was always buzzing around, always looking to make things happen, always trying to link up. Um, so not not like classically, but certainly sound enough. The wing backs are left out. Bryce Susanna was lively and direct as you'd expect on the left hand side. He actually made a couple of mistakes early on. You, you could see that rustiness, and after about six or seven minutes, he settled in and did very well. His, his attacking runs really augmented Wrexham's play. On the right was man of the match Anthony Ford. Ford was excellent. He had a, on the rare occasion he had to defend, he was very accomplished going forward. He was class, he was beating people, he was committing defenders. He put some great service into the box, he set up the penalty. A Ford, absolutely terrific, I thought. And then up front, well, Mullen and Palmer, neither of them scored again. What a shocker. Um, neither of them had their greatest games, but they're all decent. Mullen's movement and buzzing about was great, but he missed that penalty. He'd be so annoyed about that. Palmer was dominant and battled well with the centre-backs. Uh, so yeah, but but was more of a creator than getting on the end of things this time. So, a good performance by Wrexham, smooth and comfortable, and it's pleasing. Those last two games, we've never had those awkward spells where teams really get at us and cause us problems. So, the signs are promising. With the final score of Wrexham one, Maidenhead United nil. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.